Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Today we are starting in the garden, harvesting all varieties of basil. We have cinnamon, lemon, thai, lime, genovese, and giant basil. And we'll be using all of these fresh beauties for our homemade garlic scape pesto. Now I considered editing this video to be recipe by recipe, but just decided to show you everything I accomplished in between steps to be more authentic to the process and to show you how efficient I am in the kitchen. There is no time sitting around. Once I return indoors, I'm cutting our scapes into one inch segments. For those of you who are unaware, the scape develops only on hard neck garlic varieties. It contains the bloom of the plant, but you harvest the shoot before it can flower. It's thought that by pruning the garlic this way, more energy will be diverted to developing the cloves than on concentrating on flowering and going to seed. You'll see here that my scapes have dried out a bit since I harvested them nearly a week ago, but they'll get the job done. I made our first batch of this pesto last week and I just never got around to finishing off our scapes with a second batch until now. This happens, so I'm just cutting off the dried ends from the scapes. Then I'm getting little helpers to pull leaves from my basil. This step is not necessary at all. You can definitely just throw the basil in stock and all, but this is a fun job for kids to be a part of the process. And I just love their little tiny hands. Now we're going to pause our pesto making because I looked at the time and realized I needed to get bread going stat. I'm doing a double batch of my simple sandwich loaf made entirely with freshly milled grains. One of my hacks when it comes to using freshly milled grains is pre-separating them by weight into jars so that I can grab one jar and get right into the process. So one day I'll measure out 10 or 12 jars of the freshly milled grains that I need for my sandwich loaf, with each jar containing enough grains for one loaf. Since we're making a double batch, I'm using two jars. I love this tip so much. It's really setting you up to be consistent with your bread making. You could even use this with all-purpose flour. Just fill your jars with the exact amount of flour you need for your weekly sandwich loaf. I love this grain mill. It is the Nutramill Harvest Grain Mill, and I have an entire video unboxing it along with my first impressions if you'd like more information on it. We use this mill for everything with wheat berries, red, white, hard, or soft. I haven't branched out into other grains yet, but I'm very satisfied with where we're at with it. We probably use this mill three days a week. After milling our grains, we're making a sponge in our stand mixer bowl with yeast, sugar, and warm water. We'll let that mixture rest for about 10 minutes to bubble up. And while we wait, I'm skimming the cream from our weekly milk pickup. Now that our sponge is ready, I'm adding oil, salt, and our freshly milled flour. Today I used a 50-50 split of hard white and hard red wheat for these loaves, but previously I've done both completely hard red and completely hard white. It's just that in these jars, when I pre-measured them, I did a 50-50 split of hard red and hard white. When using freshly milled grains, you want to be careful with how much flour you're adding to the dough. I always reserve some flour while I watch how the dough is mixing up. If I've added quite a bit of flour, but the dough isn't pulling away from the sides, I'll cover it with a tea towel for up to 30 minutes to let the grains soak up more moisture. Then I'll return to mixing the dough before adding any extra flour. 
So while I let this dough sit and soak, I finish up skimming off the rest of our three gallons of milk. We got a quart and a pint of cream. So good. We use this for ice cream or putting it into smoothies or coffee. Our bread dough finally started pulling away from the sides of the bowl, but it was still sticking to the bottom. So I added maybe a half cup of flour and that did the trick. So then I let our stand mixer knead the dough. It's a bit of a wet dough, and I'm shaping it into a ball to rise in this bowl. While it rose, I tended to my children, and here's what the dough looks like once it's risen. While I made a double batch of my simple sandwich bread loaf, I'm only making one loaf instead of two. So I'm prepping my loaf pan by greasing it with butter. Then I'm taking some reserved flour and dusting it around the edges of the greased pan. This is the best trick for getting fresh bread out of the loaf pan without having to take a knife to separate the bread from the pan. And you don't have to have a non-stick pan. Just make sure you get all the butter and flour into all the nooks and crannies of the pan. After dividing the dough in half, I'm flattening out the loaf half into a loose rectangle, the width of the long edge of the loaf pan. Then I'm rolling the dough in on itself like cinnamon rolls and creating some tension before placing it in the prepared dish. We'll set that aside to let it rise until it's about an inch over the height of the loaf pan. Then we'll divide the other half of the dough into eight equal pieces. Once they're separated as evenly as possible, roll each piece into a ball with a bit of tension. After you've cut each piece, they should kind of have a scone shape with three edges, one of those edges being rounded. Tuck the three points into the center of the piece, then place that side down on your counter and gently pull the ball toward yourself so that you're creating tension between your hands, the ball, and the counter. Once your piece resembles the shape of a log as shown here, point the short side toward you and use your hands to bring the opposite short edge toward you, but underneath the ball. Continue doing this, slightly twisting and rotating the ball as you create more shape and tension. I'm leaving four of these balls as they are, they will become English muffins, but the remaining flour I'm making into bagels. So I'm taking each prepared ball and pushing my thumb through the center of the sphere and gently widening that hole by rolling it around two of my fingers.
here are our goods in progress. The oven is preheating, English muffins are frying, bagels are boiling. While our bread and bagels bake, I'm removing the petals and leaves of calendula that I previously dried in my dehydrator a day or two before this video. This process is so therapeutic, and I usually do a few flowers here and there as I'm working around the house. My thoughts right now for using this calendula is to infuse it in oil to create a salve. If you harvest calendula, how do you use it? Or what are your favorite herbs to grow in your garden? Let me know in the comments. Here are our finished goods. They look so delicious. Just voicing over this video makes me want to eat them again, but we've eaten them already. They're gone. So as the new week begins, I'll do this bread making process all over again. Finally, we're finishing up with what we started, our garlic scape pesto. I'm blending the cut scapes and garlic first. Once they're roughly blended, I'm adding Parmesan cheese and then the oil slowly as I'm blending it. And this is where I realized that I forgot to add the walnuts. I had rinsed out the blender and everything, and now we're going back in to add those walnuts. And there we have it. I like to mix this pesto with ricotta and spread it on my breakfast sandwiches or stuff it in my lasagna. I'm hoping to make Trinité al pasto for my children. They know it from the animated movie Luca, so I thought they might enjoy experiencing it in real life. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.